Greetings, Saberites. None of us here. Uh, had a small class in Saber Fit this week, so we got to pull out the Saber Staff and uh, play around with it a little bit. And so I thought I'd do a couple of videos on it. Um, we did one about uh, how to fight against the Saber Staff. Um, <clears throat> We'll go over how to fight against the Saber Staff, um, and uh, we went over how to fight with the Saber Staff and how to fight against it. And to discuss both of those, we have to go over what the limitations of this are. Now, uh, one thing that we talk about a whole lot is the fact that you cannot actually retract these blades. Once they're out, they're out, even if we turn them off we can't go past our body. That then gives us a limited strike range of motion so that even if I'm standing straight on like this, right, if I want to go across there, I have to really turn my upper, upper body and distract my shoulders from my hips, right? If I don't, I'm gonna hit myself and I'm right here at this angle. Now, <clears throat> that comes into play too when we reach forward here. Okay. <clears throat> so there. Now, it's easy to kind of keep track of that when you're by yourself. Um, when you are going up against another person, you'll find that when I go for something here, it is difficult not to let this bounce right off of your body. So, there is something to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, the limitation of it, is of course the length of the hilt and the uh, vulnerability of the hands. So as I'm going through this range of motion here, most of the time my hands are just presented right, right for you. Also, if you notice, there is a gap right in the middle right in here, where the blades do not really cross very often, right? And so this presents a, a big weak point. Um, <clears throat> keeping these uh, things tight, fast, all of that kind of thing helps. So keeping that in mind, what is a good strategy to use when you are using the Saber Step? Well, for one thing, keep it moving. Okay. Don't let it stay in one spot so that I'm here, there. And also, keep yourself moving. You want to stay out of the way because you are vulnerable. There. Now, what will happen is people will become very distracted by the blades. And you can either, you can do one of two things. You can intimidate them with them. <clears throat> where if I'm spinning them around here and I'm going through here, you'll see some of that in the Spartan footage that we've got. Okay. It's very tempting to follow those blades and try to figure out where that second one is coming. Okay. There's an easy way around that, but we'll get into that in, in another video. Um, <clears throat> here, okay? So when I'm going here, I wanna keep it moving, and especially I wanna make sure that my hands and my hilt are moving through space, right? That I'm not just moving it like this, because if I'm moving it like this, it's Staying right there. Okay, so that's one one thing to, uh, to 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 use is try to intimidate the other guy by getting these blades to move around, keeping your hands out of the way so they can't really get that pot shot. The other way is to play it very very defensive and <clears throat> keep it behind you, allow them to come come into range, and try to get that quick double and then out. Again, always using nice tight circles quickly so that you're moving off the line and out of the way And uh, <clears throat> for that. So it's not easy to fight with one of these things very effectively because as Eve and I found out, it is extremely easy to hit yourself um, as you're going through melees and, and stuff like this. You'll knock yourself in your head and I install that. The fact that this is actually a short range weapon means that you're gonna get mostly hand shots, hilt shots, 
that kind of thing. Um, you can extend out and try poking like that, but again, you have a problem with this. So, lots of limitations. Um, it's a really good way to handicap somebody. So if you have uh, two people, an instructor and a beginner going up against each other, give the instructor one of these or give the, give the more advanced student one of these so they have that extra thing to, hang, to, to think about. It does somehow, or at some point, become a little bit of a liability um, in, in a sparring situation um, to have to think about that second blade. When you're practicing, however, it's a great thing to think about. Right? It's a great thing to have there because it, it keeps you honest when you don't have an opponent or you don't have a partner giving you automatic feedback. <clears throat> okay. So there we go. Um, a little bit about some strategies to use when trying to spar with this thing. It's not ideal. It's really, really difficult. It's not the weapon I would choose, definitely. Um, if you could actually turn these off and on and they would disappear, now you're talking. So uh, that would be where that goes. Okay, so uh, that's it for that. A little overview on how to use this against maybe a single saber or such. Um, the next one we'll do, it will be uh, how to fight against somebody who is using one of these, how to take advantage of those uh, weaknesses. All right, so till next time, have a great day. Happy savoring.